Yeah. Call to order the City Council work session for the City of East Grand Forks. Tuesday, July 24th, 2018 is now 5 o'clock. With City Clerk, please call roll. Okay. Mayor Steve Yander? Here. Council President Mark Olstead? Here. Council Vice President Chad Grassel? Council Members Clarence Vetter? Here. Mike Pakshavinsky? Here. Tim Riapel? Here. Henry Tweeten? Here. Mark Demers? Present. Does term quorum. Number one, review of 2017 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Carla and Tracy. Yeah, Tracy on this side. Uh, we want to welcome Tracy Brueggemann from Brady Martz, and she will give an update on the 2017 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Thanks, Carla. So first, I'd like to thank you for hiring Brady Martz, and secondly, I'd like to thank the city staff for their assistance during our audit. On page 7 is the Independent Auditor's Report. The city received an unmodified opinion, which is the same opinion the city has received in the prior year. In our opinion, the financial statements present fairly in all material respects. The financial position of the city as of December 31st, 2017, and the changes in financial position and cash flows in accordance with the accounting principles generally accepted in the United States. On page 22 is the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance for the governmental funds. The general fund balance increased 835516 and ended the year with a fund balance of $5,431,535. The capital project fund balance increased $1,288,509 and ended the year with a fund balance of 344130 the current city project's fund balance decreased 64875 and ended the year with a fund balance of 79928 The 2017 assessment bonds fund balance increased 370908 and ended the year with a fund balance of 536077 The sales tax pool fund had no change and ended the year with a deficit fund balance of $1,956,389. The non-major governmental fund balances increased $1,171,316 and ended the year with a fund balance of $6,021,305. On page 27 is the statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in net position for the proprietary funds. The electric fund had income before transfers and contributions of 390580 and the electric fund had a $250,000 transfer out. The water fund had income before contributions of 358151 The sewage fund had income of $1,102,130. And the stormwater fund had a loss before contributions of 69,261. The commercial properties had a loss of 4,973. The refuse fund had income of 68,240. And the internal service fund had income of 127,265. On page 37 is the note for cash, cash equivalents, and investments. Cash and investments are approximately 3,200,000 more than the prior year. As of December 31st, 2017, the cash and investment balance was 30,523,864. On page 121 is our report on internal control over financial reporting and on compliance and other matters. And we noted no instances of non-compliance. On page 123 is our report on compliance for each major federal program and on internal control over compliance in accordance with the uniform guidance. We audited the capitaliz capitalization grants for clean water 
and the results of the test disclosed no instances of noncompliance. And in addition to the report, we've also issued a management letter, uniform guidance. Um, the city has not updated its procurement policy in accordance with uniform guidance. And we'd recommend that the city review and update its procurement policy. Does anybody have any questions on that? Mr. Demers. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the cash, the note for cash, cash equivalents investments, that's that $11 million in cash and cash equivalents. Is that business type and government activities? Yes. Okay. So that's including everything, water and All light. All funds, okay. yes. So when we look at just the back on that statement in that position where it says assets, cash and cash equivalents, primary government, there's governmental activities and then business type activities, is that, that's the same number, right? 11, or 11 million 170, okay. So, how does this, where's the number where we're talking about our, our um, reserve balance, I guess, and how much, is there anywhere where it talks about just the city alone as far as the cash and cash equivalents? Are you may be interested in the general fund balance. Okay. On page 20. 20. Okay, so that's just the city. That is the city. The, well, and I'm assuming you're just interested in the general fund. Mm -hmm. So the first column where you have an unassigned fund balance of 5,407,286. And when we're talking about what we need for our balance, it's <clears throat> reserve to expenditure. Well, sometimes they look at reverse to expenditure, sometimes they look at revenue. If you look on page 22, if you look at what the fund balance is at 5,431,535, the revenues is 10,5, so we're at about 50%. So we should be fine. Yeah, and I guess I, I close to. Yeah. Yeah, and you can look at either one. I tend to look at our expenditures more. I'm but more I guess concerned the, with our expenditures than our revenue, as far as what that we have enough to cover our expenditures. But for the auditor system. looks at which one. Well, the state used to look at the expenditures. Now they're looking at revenues. So it, it, it's basically you as a group. What do you look at? They also right. talk about having your, so much money to run the city for three months, six months, whatever right. you as a city would like. But and Tracy, with your experience with uh, other cities, and typically which do they? So, well, the, rec the recommendation from the OSA is 50% of your expenditures or, no, 35 to 50% of your revenue or five months of your expenditures is what they recommend. Mm -hmm. so, so once again, it gets back to what tool you're using as a city. For the guideline. And when you talk about the five months, do you take your peak five months of expenditure or is that like a... I would, an average. Okay. So I guess when it comes up to budgeting, it looks like we're topped out at the 50% on the, when we talk about revenues, I don't know how it lays out to the five months average or, you know, whatever. I guess I could, I can answer that as far as, as, as far as I'm concerned with the, the SSA administrator, I, I think the these last few years the council has done a very good job of getting working with the finance department to get the re the reserves to where we need them to be when we um, for a while we were they were low um, right now I'm to the point where I, I'm very comfortable with where we're at with the reserves and I don't know that we have to necessarily make an effort to increase the reserves anymore I think we just maintain where we're at thank you I'd just say that <clears throat> to simplify it our, res our fund balance has, after a long time, finally been restored to a healthy level after a lot of pain. And I can think we think we can tell the public now that we're back to um, a sound footing and that any increase in the levy will be attributed to 
the goods and services that we provide the citizens and not in restoring our rainy day fund that we depleted. And like we've said, even for the last year or two, to hopefully get toward normal inflationary increases in the levy, not a catch up. Basically saying what you've said, just to sort of track with the fact that everything gradually goes up at a rate of, of inflation, and that's a good place to be. I, I agree with that, uh, and I'm, I mean, granted we're at the CAFR here, but I will, we're with the, in the budgeting process here, though, I will remind us that we do have some serious capital improvements that we have to look at <laughs> at some point. So just to, just to be here. I'm sorry I had to do that. Reed. And you're no fun. That was for you. That <laughs> 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 Mr. Demers. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, what type of yield are we getting on those investments, both, I guess, at, on the city side and water and light? Well, not well because we're limited to where we can put our money. So it's either CDs, which is limited to $250,000 per bank, and government securities. And we have to have some of those because we have to maintain that fund balance. But at some point, we're going to be losing money as interest rates climb, correct? If, if we get a well, percent and a half of interest and inflation goes to 2%, we're losing money, correct? Well, what we've done with our investments is they're staggered within five to seven years, I mean, between now and seven years. So we've been doing that consistently. So try to, you know, catch I'm, those up and downs of the interest rates, which have stayed pretty same for five to seven years, actually. I guess, Tracy, maybe you could answer that, too, as far as what you see with the, with what we get in the investments. And you know, I don't think I'm in a position to okay. address the investment market. You do your your investments that you can invest in are limited to the CDs, the more secure investments out there. Right. I guess my point is is we've put an emphasis on reserve, which we have to have by some, you know, by the auditor's recommendations. But at some point, having over reserving ourselves, we're basically wasting money because. If we have it invested at one percent or two, one and a half or two percent, and inflation goes to two and a half percent, that money would have been better held in in the public's or in the private hands, you know. Okay, so I see, what, I see what you're saying there, yeah. And I, I and I, I guess agree. I just want to make sure that we're cognizant of that. We don't want to over reserve ourselves, and I think that we should have that discussion uh, amongst all of our all of our funds. Um, you know, I think it's a, just looking at the financial picture going forward, it looks like there's some possibility of of interest coming back that's been dormant for 10 years or so. And, and so. I would agree. I mean, we're at the point now where we don't have to focus on increasing our fund balance. We're in the, we're in the point now where we'd be maintaining it. Um, you know, additional money that would be coming in or over just that we would recommend we put towards future capital improvements and again you know you, you that money you can only tie up in in extremely conservative rates as well so it's but yeah, I see what you say and yeah I agree I don't think we need we can focus more on our our immediate needs we don't have to do the we don't have to increase our fund balance like we did thank you anybody else have anything I see none appreciate it thanks thank for coming you. Move on to number two, marketing plan update and branding discussion. <laughs> Mr. Gordy. Thank you for the opportunity to bring this to you today. Um, this item was discussed at the EDA meeting earlier today, and we're going to do a presentation with you so we sure. can have the same discussion. See if you come to the same conclusions, and because that'll give us some guidance on where to go from here. So at this point, I'm going to turn to take you, Andrew, and Taylor from AE2S, and they are going to see if they can get the mouse to work so we can see the presentation. So that's any better. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm Andrea Bow from AE2S Communications. I'm Taylor from AE2S Communications. 
And so, as Paul said, we presented this, um, these branding themes to the Economic Development Association Board earlier today. And uh, we're going to go through the presentation again. Some of you have already seen it, so we'll try to be a little bit quicker <laughs> this time. Um, first of all, we just want to start out with what is branding. And I think that Paul maybe uh, gave you a packet of information, yep, uh, branding in your packet. So. Um, this is just a reiteration of what was in your packet and really focusing on a brand is more than a logo. Of course, people equate a logo with a brand. It is part of the visual identity, but a brand is really more than that. It's the personality, culture of the community. Um, a brand appeals to all senses, so if you are in a community, it's how the community feels. Is it cozy? Is it warm, welcoming, that sort of thing? Um, it's really the experience of the community. So. And then the goal of branding, um, of course, it's ident identify your identity and purpose, clearly communicate who East Grand Forks is, and that's really the visual identity portion of it, differentiate East Grand Forks from uh, the communities around it in other parts of the state. We wanted to make sure that as we were thinking about this brand, it certainly is um, really focused on economic development, but we also had to um, make sure that it was synonymous with the city as a whole and um, ultimately support the economic development um, strategic plan. So when you get into community branding, there's there's some nuances with community branding, and uh, it's really important that that community brand is authentic to that community. And so um, the general public of the community needs to recognize it, identify with the brand. Um, of course, the economic development board, the city council, staff are going to be spokespeople for this brand. But um, regardless whether you like it or not, the community as a whole is going to be your unofficial spokespeople for the brand. And so they really need to identify with it. Um, it creates opportunities to show everyday life if you pick something that's authentic to East Grand Forks. And beyond that community, then, when people are looking to move here, have businesses, build businesses here, um, it builds confidence because they have trust in the community. It's authentic. And this is just quickly going through the brand development process that we used for East Grand Forks when we first started this project. And it's a, it's a broader marketing plan project, but branding is a critical part of it. And so when we started it, we interviewed leaders from East Grand Forks and Grand Forks. We asked open-ended open questions, you know, what are the opportunities and challenges? Uh, from those interviews, we gleaned kind of some themes that were coming out. Um, we launched a community survey. It was a digital survey. We had about 200 respondents. And really that is probably the most important piece of this as we really got a sense of what people were thinking about the community. Um, from there, seven options, brand options were created. And then we sent those options to a focus group. And that focus group had about 40 people in it. Um, it, it's a mix of age ranges, our target, you know, age ranges and geographies. And so this is a snapshot of um, one of the survey questions, what is the greatest asset of East Grand Forks? And this is a word cloud and it's not very detailed, but you can see some of the things that pop up and that's a small town feel, it's warm, inviting, community schools are important, um, they're great assets, the people. Um, and then you go to the next question, and this is more of describe the culture of personality of East Grand Forks. And you really got that same feel, that small town, warm, welcoming, we're connected, nice, friendly. Those things kind of always bubbled up to the top. So beyond being authentic to the people in the community, we wanted to make sure that that brand appealed to um, people that we were targeting outside of this community and for economic development, it's workforce, it's housing, it's businesses, whether it's small businesses, entrepreneurs, commercial, what have you. And so we are focusing on the people first and millennials, first time homeowners, entrepreneurs, they're starting families, um, Gen Xers building homes, they're building their second homes, their business owners and they're raising their families as well. 
And just as a side to this, as we're looking at targeting people outside this community, this is just a little snippet of um, some broader research, but Ben Winchester is a data scientist, social scientist for the University of Minnesota, and he really focuses on rural and small communities and what attracts people there, the growth patterns in the state and in the U.S. And so one of the things that he's done over many years of research is shown that the population is actually increasing in rural and small communities, and the largest age group is at 30 to 49 age group, which is also our target market. They're choosing rural and small communities, and they're choosing them because that's the age that you're raising families. You want something that's you know, safe, secure, good schools, uh, less busy. We hear that a lot. You know, We don't want to spend our whole life in a rat race commuting. Um, and of course, there's lower home prices um, as compared to metro areas. And um, just another bullet is they want a sense of community and be involved in their community, which tends to happen more in smaller communities. So after we looked at the survey results and the other data that Andrea shared, along with some other things, uh, the seven options were created and they were brought to a focus group. And the seven options that were brought to a focus group didn't have design elements to them yet. It was purely a message to see if the messaging would connect with the different people in the focus group. So who was in the focus group? Um, like mentioned before, it was a variety of people who lived in different locations. We had people that currently live in East Grand Forks as well as Grand Forks and then people that grew up in East Grand Forks but have since moved for other opportunities and then the Minneapolis area and then some other states that are near this area. Uh, and then when we look at the ages we had people from 18 to older than 56 but we really focused on the target age which is the 26 to 45 range. When we looked at the data from the focus group, there was messaging that rose to the top, especially three messages, and all of those messages were very positive, which is awesome, and they can be used transitionally between the EDA and the city and other um, quality of life things that East Grand Forks has too that everyone that is here knows about. So like the family-friendly aspect or even the good education and just what the community is all about and it was not used by any other communities in the region. And we'll show you the results of this focus group after we look at or your opinions and show you the stuff so you're not influenced right away. And then just some notes on the creative process. Uh, when we went to design the different options, we wanted to use fonts that were simplistic and distinctive but easy to read. Uh, the design is around digital and traditional, meaning that we wanted it to be something that could be used uh, digitally, like social media, but as well as on print materials like posters. Uh, they're simplistic but unique, and the visual brand identity is shown in black and white, and the reason behind this is color is persuasive, and again, we didn't want to persuade you with color. Okay. I'm going to suggest we do like we did at the EDA, show all the okay. options, and then have the discussion. Perfect. <clears throat> Go ahead. That's uh, so one of the first ones is our roots run deep. And the design for this one is uh, kind of within the font. So the roots font is very organic and kind of looks like how roots could go. And how we got here and what made us think of this brand is it's really a play off of being part of the upper Midwest and the rich agricultural history in the area. Businesses can take root and grow here and it's also family friendly and very connected and rooted. Uh, it's safe and it's stable and when we think of this brand and where it could go, the marketing collateral could focus on taking root and growing businesses and families and having a truly good life in East Grand Forks. And on the right side you can find some of the words and sayings that we found in our interviews and surveys that kind of brought these words to life and got directed us in this area. 
Uh, this slide just kind of shows and isn't in no mean what we would do, but just kind of a visualize of how the brand could work. So on a website, it may look like this, and you could even put it on t-shirts. Uh, the bottom corner has like a sticker or a magnet, or even you could do fun things like plants or seeds that you could give out when the EDA is meeting people or at conferences and things like that. The next one is Live Simple and Look North. Again, this is a really clean font, which would remind you of simple. And the Look North actually makes you look north with the arrow. Your eye has to go up and see what's going on up there. Uh, this one showcases that, again, it's the best of small community living. And you're getting out of that city rat race life. And you are really focused on the target market in this one, and that's what they want, is they want those easy commutes that we enjoy here. It, look north, which it says, or looking up, has a positive connotation, and so it, it overall gives you that good feeling. It's people focused too, and it's appealing to the entrepreneurs. And it, like before, it's tied to geography. And when we think of this brand, we think that um, the focus could be on making things simple. Uh, like starting or growing businesses here are simple because you have the support of the EDA and the wonderful community. And just living simply. It's a simple life here. And again, the words on the side kind of directed us to this brand. Um, some examples of how it could look, uh, another website. You could also make banners to put on poles around the community and a couple of different ideas for passing out like keychains or the water bottles. The third logo or brand is Life Connected. And this one, uh, Connected is actually Connected with the font, and it kind of has like a stamp, authentic feel to it. It speaks to the fact that the community is smaller, but truly is connected to each other. Businesses are connected along with the people that live here. And it's also connected to the schools, the downtown, and the Greenway. And not only things within the city, but it's also connected to a larger city. And when we think of this brand and what could lead to it, and the development could be around connecting opportunities, connecting to nature, connecting to education, and connecting to technology. And again, some of the words that we saw that inspired us to think of this brand. And just a few more examples of another website, um, a notebook or coffee mugs or even just a jump drive. So this is the point in time that we like to hear discussion and as we're talking about this and kind of processing these different ideas is, you know, which message reaches your goals, the strategic goals of the plan or strategic plan, um, which message has personality and the broadest appeal, which message do you feel will resonate with the target audiences, that 25 to 45 year old that will be starting or running businesses, buying homes, building homes. And probably maybe the most important one is which one can you be proud of? You know, it's going to be all over the place. Which is the one that you can stand behind? I would, at this point, I'd step back. There was more discussion that we'll add to this after you discuss the first part. Then we'll bring up some of the suggestions that EDA had. But rather than prejudice the discussion at this point, I, I, I know I'm interested in hearing what you had to say, and I'm sure that our, our colleagues from AE2S are also interested in hearing your, your very frank thoughts about what you think. Mr. Demers. Actually, I'll yield to the mayor. You can Either have. way. Um, one thing I like about all of these is, um, and knowing the Midwestern kind of humbleness or humility factor, none of these is saying, we're the best ever. We rock. We got this. Right, that would just not sit well, and I won't talk about any other branding efforts that that gave a little of that vibe, but they don't really stick. We're not comfortable saying, "Yeah, I'm that guy." You know, we're, we're that that thing. So the fact is that that these all kind of take that that little softer, that little more kind of an introspective approach. I think is a very good thing. 
And I like the way you're, you're positioning this because on the one hand, we want our local people to own it, right? The ones who are here say, you know what, that resonates with me, that's, that's good. And we want it to have an appeal to those outside the area considering being part of our community. So my hesitation on, for example, our roots run deep, that would resonate, I think, very, very well to the ones that are here, might create a little bit of an impediment actually to coming here. Wait a minute, would I be an outsider if I got there because your roots run so deep, but my roots would not be so deep because I'm a, I'm a transplant. So if I have a hesitation, you know, you're looking at the two demographics. One is all of us that are here. The other is to those that we would say, come on over. Um, so the other two also look wonderful. For me, I sure like this, this life connected idea. And especially if we offer that connection to those who would like to be connected, right? To, to that sense of, yep, there's a great connection here, here to the land, to nature with our greenway, but also a connectedness to the community with each other. And oh, by the way, there's room also for more individuals to be connected in like fashion. So that, that one, I, I'd say just first blush looks great, you know, it's connected to Minnesota because we like being Minnesotans also, some of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that just off the cuff. We're probably also looking east and west, so that would be if I had, a, and, and if I had a little hesitation to the look north, <laughs> you know, where are, we, where are we drawing people from? They may be from the east, the west, the north, and so they would have to look west or east or south to, to come here. You watched our meeting today, didn't you? No. No, actually, I had talked to the mayor ahead of time uh, a week or so ago. Yeah. Okay. So that's just my off the cuff. And, and what I did at the meeting today without giving attribution is I talked about what we talked to, the, putting the silhouette of Minnesota on the look north with the star where East Grand Forks is and superimposing that logo on there. So it could it could be done that way. Yep. That's where that's where the idea came from. I can't claim credit. No, you, you've done idea. good work. I think these are all they have a real nice feel to them. I think they match up with kind of our values, who we are, and and which of them we lean toward, or some hybrid of them. I think we're on the right track. Mr. Jamers. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd first like to say thank you for doing this. It's something that's been I've wanted for a long time since we've been fighting about thinking about branding about trying to figure out what the logo should be on letterhead I've always said that we need to think about who we are and what we want to communicate before we decide on what the picture is and I think this is a good way and these guys have done a great job of walking us through that process <clears throat> so thank you um, my initial reactions is I gravitate personally to the roots one because my roots do go deep here, uh, you know. I I understand the point that it could seem exclusive. Um, I don't know. I think it also has a potential to play on our agricultural, you know, um, community and and highlight that. I love the idea of roots and giving a giving a tree to every new person that lives in East Grand Forks. I mean, we already have, you know, landscaping thing, but packaging in that and, and type that type of thing. I love that idea. Um, it's, it seems natural to me. It seems good. But like I said, I, I really understand some of the kind of the hesitancy towards it. My, the the hesit hesitancy I have towards it is there's already a, a Canadian brand roots. I don't know how that would play or if it would be if that would push back or people would kind of lose that in that or I don't know or if it would be seen as trying to copy that brand or you know I don't know um, I don't love the font but I think there could be tweaks on that but I like that's the one personally as someone that's here locally I, I think it may detract from someone that might come from Minneapolis but I think if you're in you know in the 100 mile vicinity I think it might resonate um, the the look north one I think is probably the most appealing to people that are on the Y millennial axis it looks like a north face logo it looks like I mean it it doesn't but it does you know I mean that's it's an active it's an active look it seems like adventurous outdoorsy I like it I don't like the word 
I, I think North has, like you said, it makes you look up, but I think people associate North, especially when they think of it as cold. <laughs> so that would be my, that's my takeaway. Um, I do like the Life Connected, too. Um, so I guess my, my choices are, are kind of between the Roots and the Connected. Um, I just, I'm not like a, I kind of like the fonts of the, the, the North the north one and more structured but I get like if you're talking about connection and you're talking about roots it's got to be a little bit more um, loose I guess and connected so fluid so that's my take I guess I it, it all kind of depends on what you want to be I you know <laughs> so thank Anything you else? But it really has to reflect who we are okay as much as what we want to be it has to reflect who we are what is our essence um, I'm going to suggest that maybe Mr. Tweeden or, or um, Mr. Vetter should give their comments or yourself before we hear from Tim or Mike, because Tim and Mike participated in the discussion earlier today. I'll, I'll make mine first and then then go. Um, roots, the first one reminds me of a bank that's up in Cavalier. They have the Roots billboards all over. Uh, roots run deep. It's, so right away that's why I thought I didn't want to be associated with Something like that, you know. It's, 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 to me, it's out there already, personally. Um, the live simple look north. Um, I like the design of it, but I just don't like the feel of making it seem we're real simple here. When then you go in north and there's nothing there. I mean, it's <laughs> you know, it gives me that feeling of you know, oh, why should I go there? It's north and it's it's simple, but. But the, my one I like is Life Connected because, I mean, we can use everything. We can use our greenway. You can use whatever we have around here connected to, you know, Park and Rec. I mean, we can, everything is in this area, what we have to offer, which we want to project out there. You know, we have the campground. We have, I mean, many things that we have around here that, you know, you can use the schools. You can use whatever. I mean, it's just, that's my one I like the most. Library Senior Center, right? Where people right. go to connect. Right. Yeah. Henry? Uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, if you look at the broad, the broad picture of East Grand Forks, it has continuous growth in all levels. Uh, there isn't any place in the state that has a more positive growth than East Grand Forks at all levels. And it's going to be very interesting in the 2020 census because there are certain groups that have grown very well. Now, the one thing that has happened uh, as an illustration, uh, 82 to 83 percent of all students that graduate from a high school, a public high school, has taken some courses at the tech school. That's an unusually high amount. Uh, you will also find that uh, from the 18 to 34 group, we have uh, done more th uh, than probably any city in the state to take and uh, have an educated workforce. Uh, and if you take the whole area of education, what have we had? Uh, Sacred Heart has expanded. Our public school has expanded. Our uh, tech school now uh, this year has had substantial expansion. It'll come out shortly. But there's another thing that has happened that people don't realize. What city of our size anywhere has as many medical clinics with as many people? Now, if you go in and talk to the clinics, well, here we have three clinics. They're all hiring people. Uh, 
You can go in, they, they're hiring a substantial amount of people. Now, one of the things that has happened is we also have a growth in that particular area. Our fire chief can tell you that just based upon uh, the calls that we get for seniors and so forth, rescue calls. But there's a, there's a positive attitude also that this city, its infrastructure and its appearance has been maintained. That has been one of the number, number of priorities uh, of, of the city is to maintain the infrastructure. Henry, do you have a comment on what we're talking about and, here? Uh, but they're all pro something to be proud of. So it's, it's much more expensive, extensive than the younger group. And one thing that you'll find, the census group from 18 to 34 is, is higher here. That group is higher than the national group. Do you have a feeling of one of these three up here that you prefer mostly or not? Well, I, I, I take a much broader view. I, I know, we're talking about the three, the roots runs deep. Well, I, 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 I think that uh, we're meeting the, the goals and on all of those. And I think that the city is doing well. I, I approach it a little different, but I'll, I'll stop from okay. there. Mr. Vetter. Thank you. The, the first thing I thought of with with Roots was outside of the, the target audience. I thought that it was appealing more to the 46 and up group. So I kind of ruled that one out. The, the look north, we've got so many businesses in town already with the north in their name. So I wanted to stay away from that one. So I, Life Connected, I think, appeals to your, your target audience the best. You sound like an accountant. Short and brief. <laughs> Mr. Gordy. Well, did Tim and Mike want to add anything? Sure, I will. Um, I a lot of what we've heard tonight, we heard today at at our um, at our EDA meeting. Um, I I felt about the roots is that it was exclusive, and if you're not from here, you you know you you know that's the sort of thing that I think. Um, is something that that would be a, um, a reason to stay away from that one. Uh, the the north one, the one thing I agree with what's been said about about that. The thing I pointed out today is part of our our target is Winnipeg, and they aren't going to be looking north for us. They and and so so that is. I mean, I I like a lot of things about that, but just. Just having that point on the compass is is probably something that we should stay away from. Depends so. on how far you go. <laughs> what, okay, <laughs> <laughs> or how high you are. So, so that left that left life connected, and um, and I, and I like that. I. It's it's not not a single one of these gave me the aha that's it it, it just they don't but that's not really what we're looking for we're looking for something that that can tell people who we are tell ourselves who we are and being connected is something um, that is something that that is part of this community being connected in a lot of different ways uh, just the fact that we're televising this meeting we're connected with our community uh, we're connected with um, our neighbors across the river with bridges and all, all kinds of different connections. So, so I do like that. Um, I'll let Paul talk about the, the conclusion we came up with once, once Tim is done. Um, it's kind of an interesting recommendation that came out of the EDA, but we'll, I'll, we'll wait for that. I'll let Tim go. Thank you. Um, I too selected the Life Connected and it was on the basis that I think I'm pretty good at branding my own business and I've got the state of Minnesota on there with the Border States Trophy and Awards just like that. What we also concluded is the East Grand Forks EDA have on there we can use East Grand Forks Parks and Recreation. We can use East Grand Forks Water and Light. We can Everybody can expand but still use that same brand on there. And it uh, 
it did give the warm feel a little bit that we are a community and the reason we moved here was because we really like our neighborhood and we like our churches we like our schools so the EDA is actually, do you want to talk first? Well, I was going to say, do you want to see the results of the focus group? I, I, I was going to ask if they wanted to. Okay. okay. Because they parallel with the focus groups very well. Mm -hmm. But one of the, what the EDA started talking about is, can you combine two and three? Something like life connected, live simple, or live connected, live simple, or something like that, and actually ask AE2S to come back with a couple of those boards on the August 7th to discuss those ideas. So AET, AE2S is going to do that uh, for August 7th, and then the EDA will have that to compare and can share that information with yourselves. And we can reject that and just stick with that if we want. Yeah. It's just just but giving us another, another potential Just option. another view. Yeah. But the Minnesota, that was important to have on there. One of the comments was the live simple is for people that move here from a place where it took an hour and a half to get to work yeah. the you know the long commutes is that's just something that we don't have to deal with here and it simplifies your life to be that close to everything so that's kind of why they wanted to get that incorporated into the being connected it should be live simply though so good. they don't want to yeah. think that we're illiterate <laughs> that was the other that was the other thing <laughs> we, we said that <laughs> you could have a lot of fun with with life connected for example it's a silly little thing but we recently upgraded our wi-fi in the campground you know so you can camp and and have better wi-fi mm -hmm. and stay connected so you could have you could bring in the high tech even on the connected part of that I think there's a wonderful opportunity with the connection, with the connected part, yeah. whether it's done with this one by itself or whether it's integrated with the second one, live simply. And I think simply is better than simple. Mm -hmm. Live simply. Uh, bring those back in and, and work together with the state of Minnesota on there. I think that gives us something that really reflects where we are and where we should be. To shortcut the process, what you've talked about here reflected the results uh, of the focus groups. And the EDA, in their discussions, reflected the results of the focus groups. So, I mean, we can shortcut all those slides right now and save some time because it, it really does reflect what we found in the research. Mr. Murphy Jensen. Uh, yeah, just two comments. And I hope I'm not overstepping my um, place we'll, here. We'll it? let you know. Okay. <laughs> yep, you <laughs> are. Uh, first of all, the, the, the Live Simple Look North, that one really appealed to me. Um, just be, and I think that's because I grew up outside of the metro area, and this is very north to you know where I grew up and and the, the, the live simple concept of it um, and I do see the appeal of the life connected and the only comment I would have with that is to, when I first thought when I saw that if I was looking at that with brand new fresh eyes it seems kind of like if there's a way that we could elaborate on that kind of what that means because I looked at it as like connected kind of connected to what you know um, that's a good so, thing that you're asking that question yeah I see a series of, of, of information that goes with it connected to nature, connected to business, connected to education, yeah. and, and with all and as long the things and have pages that show how we are connected yeah. to everything. And as long as the, the first look that you get at it is, is intriguing enough or, or flashy enough or whatever to get you to want to explore to that next level. It tells us where we're at, though. Yeah. Some people have no idea where East Grand Forks is. That little star yeah. and that little circle dictates I, where we are. Just an observation of being in both rooms, this room embraced that one just as it is, I think more whole, more wholeheartedly than, than the, the noon meeting today. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yes, I would agree. And I would embrace it as a starting point. And if it takes off and goes a little sideways from where it starts, that's good too. Well, what I would suggest is we come back here on the 14th after going to EDA on the 7th, and we can show you the different results and then you'll have the information from the EDA as well, and then we can go forward to what we have to do to uh, actually implement this. Because, I, like I said, I can see that life connected, for example, as a, as a letterhead on things with everything flowing down beneath there. It shows where we are, and then we can, if, you know, from my perspective with some of the marketing materials we end up having, we can have connected to and use that as a theme to run through there. We'll be in council chambers on the 7th upstairs. Yeah, that's why I'm, uh, the, the 14th. 14th. 
14th. That's why I was talking to the EDA on the 7th and down here on the 14th yeah. for the work session. Not down here on the 14th. You're upstairs. We're upstairs. upstairs again. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a polling place on the 14th. Oh, but it's a work session upstairs. Correct. Right. That's fine. Okay. This 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 comes this will come just in time, so we can think about how much to budget for rolling this out, <laughs> and showing the world what East Grand Forks has to offer. But uh, and I think there's also something about earn media, earn media too. And I think if you do your brand right, people will buy in. Like, what's hot right now, right? People love the Minnesota logo on T-shirts, on sweatshirts, on. I mean, the I think there's a home one out there, but there's all kinds of things, and people love that. And by putting that image on there, I think it's something that's that's sellable, and people will sell it for you. I think so. You know, if you look, if you're looking for logo, I like the having the Minnesota in there. Um, I guess. Henry, I I think that uh, one of the uh, most uh, uh, used group that we have in town area is what Reed is is working on. Uh, we've got a big growth in recreation. And certainly what's going on in the swimming pool is one thing, but baseball and uh, our, our uh, big unit up there uh, and all of our hockey and everything else, and the only thing he's showing is growth. Then on the culture part, uh, <clears throat> Charlotte's got a library and art and everything second to none for a city of our size. So I think we're covering the basis of every group. Uh, but there, if people want to uh, have a nice place to walk in the park, so, so to speak, go along the river. People drive down there and park. They come from Grand Forks. They, apparently the air is fresher here than Grand Forks. They sure. come over and walk, bicycle. Okay, Mr. Gordy, what's next then? We're a well-rounded city. Because so, of the ideas we talked about and possibly some changes, this will move back by a couple of weeks. So we'll be back here uh, for the council on the 14th to discuss this, and then we can give you a, a calendar for when we start launching things. Good. Anybody else have anything on this? I'd, I'd like to say one other thing uh, from Paul's standpoint. The very fact that a good part of the agenda it says what we're doing to help businesses indicates that we're business friendly, which is important. Somebody that age group, a young professional or business. Okay. Andrea, a question for you. To what degree do you want this available on our website right now because you have things still in development? And to what degree do you want to hold off until we do additional work yeah, with the EDA and, and City Council? I think that it would be important to hold off on posting anything on the website or social media just because we are still developing the Life Connected one and so I don't want to push out any um, information that isn't going to be correct and so holding off I think would be best till the next meeting. Do we have to erase the memory of our exponent reporter that's here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's already out there. Anyway. Yeah. It, it's, on the, it's on the videos yeah, that have just, been yeah. posted. We aren't but, officially ad you know, not, adapt, adopting you know. it yet. Yeah. What it amounts to is it gives people a chance to think, but it, it, you know, it lets us focus on where we're headed so we can uh, refine it and bring back a more refined idea in the future. And just as a side note, I mean, it's going to be an excellent opportunity to drop people to your social media sites, you know, the economic development site, which is a new um, social media site. We'd really like to launch it from that site and then have the city share it so that we're going to build that audience, too. So it's an opportunity to launch it. Okay. Do you feel you're well connected with the chamber? Chamber of Commerce? Yes. Yeah, you guys are. I know you are. Yeah. That's nice because, you know, when you look at branding, when you look at, at the community presence, they do a nice job of advancing that all the time as well. Yeah. They adopt it, and it almost becomes part of their chatter, even inside the chamber. Barry, Barry was at our meeting today. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. And just as uh, on a side, Barry and I have started the visitations, and we're talking about this and other things as we're doing visitations right now. But we've started our annual visitations with local businesses. All righty. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you.
Vote number three, request for amendment to Board of Cities Tax Agreement, Mr. Gordy. Parole is Fairfield Inn. Um, when we discussed when we discussed parole, back, and a lot of it predates me, the expectations we'd use twenty or thirty thousand dollars, up to hundred thousand dollars worth of tax credits over a two to three year period, probably over a three year period, maxing at thirty thousand each year. And uh, because the way we understood is they'd see their tax bill, you take $30,000 off, and that would be real simple. Remember I was talked to you a couple weeks ago that that's not how the program works. The program is such that you, can, that you either do the disparity tax credits or the border cities tax credits. They're mutually exclusive. The border cities tax, uh, the disparity tax credits will reduce your tax to roughly half or so of what it would be otherwise because of other things that you don't have to pay. The use of the border cities tax credits can reduce it to as low as about one eighth of what you would normally pay in a tax bill. The problem with that is, for example, on parole, they used up somewhere between sixty-one and sixty-two thousand dollars worth of tax credits for the first year alone. And that's just because none of us, nobody knew how the program worked. Not even the state knew how the program worked. And I've been working with the Department of Revenue as well as the county and deed to, to figure out how to do this. And what we found is that if you don't ha use a ma the maximum amount of tax credits, one, the county's tax system is, doesn't work it very well. But two, it, what it does is it becomes almost indistinguishable whether the benefit is greater than the use of the disparity tax credits. So therefore, it's what the conclusion we come to in working it and what I've told you before is that what we have to do is basically figure out how many years and give the appropriate number of tax credits available for each year. Because we go back, we talked about $100,000 worth of parole, my understanding, and a couple of years for parole, that we should do what we have to to make sure they get the full benefit for two years. That will they will need seventy-two thousand or so thousand dollars available in additional tax credits for next year. Is the estimate based upon the the work, the spreadsheet that I've gotten from the county. And that means that we will have to approve an amendment for an additional thirty-three thousand five hundred dollars worth of tax credits for one more year for parole. I've talked with Pro. I've shown them what it's going to be next year for their taxes, and I've shown them what it's going to be when they go on to the, to, to the disparity portion of the program rather than the border cities program. And they are, they're fine with what I've shown them, but uh, I would ask that we approve an additional $33,500 in tax credit specifically for Pro. Thank you all. Uh, so that uh, we can make sure that we do what we th what we thought we were doing in the first place. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on that at this time, Mr. Vetter? Thank you. So, are you are you saying then that their maximum benefit that they're going to get is one hundred and thirty thousand? Yes. Why? If the original agreement was one hundred thousand, why don't we stick with the original agreement? If we stick with the original agreement, they're Taxes next year, the difference between the disparity tax and the agreement tax is $4,000. Okay. And the way I read the materials, and like I said, some of them predate me, and I could well be wrong, but the way I read the materials is we committed to at least two years with them. That being the case, in order to do that, we need to give them the additional tax credits to fulfill that original commitment. Oh, two years? Two years. And they already got one year? They got one year. And they're gonna the second year they're gonna get four thousand? Wouldn't that be two years? No. Second year would be seventy two thousand. There's thirty eight thousand available, so you, we have to add about thirty three thousand dollars more. Okay, so the second year then they, if we don't do anything they'd get thirty eight thousand. Yeah. And it would be their hundred thousand that we originally agreed mm -hmm. to. I have no problem with that. Okay. Okay. Anybody else any questions on it? None. Move on to number four, request to approve the three, board, three border cities tax agreements. Remember I talked about how we have businesses making improvements, such as what Jay Holmes has done for the Holmes Autos 
on uh, 220 on and we created a program to allow for to provide for some additional benefits we have three businesses that qualify to be able to have access to that program Jay Holmes applied for that program prior to the time that you adopted the, the rules for that program um, they had asked for five years their annual benefit will be rough it would be just under five thousand dollars so the total benefit they're looking for is twenty five thousand dollars the second one is uh, Todd's trailers their annual benefit would be five thousand dollars for the building that they built and the employees they added and the third one is lumber mart which has asked for three years um, and their benefit would be approximately eighty thousand dollars if it were approved they added two employees the eda discussed that at great length at the meeting today and said why are they being treated differently or why are they being handled differently than Todd's trailers is and the recommendation of the EDA <coughs> is to approve one year which is approximately twenty seven thousand dollars of tax credits that's a very succinct version of everything anybody have any questions on that I, I see a difference then between what initially came out and what the EDA board ultimately recommended is that true so we were talking three years initially, now we're down to one. Could you please take us back through, if you could, some of the discussion that, that brought that change? Do you want to take uh, start, well, Tim? Well, initially, under the old program, it was for a three-year period. Well, it could go up to five years. It could go up to five. Then we changed it to a, a one-year. Well, we added for, we added potential recipients to the program and we look specifically at one year if you did improvements such as were being done by homes autos and but they had asked for five years before that was approved that's why there is at five years but the uh, discussion today had to do with uh, it's eighty thousand dollars in credits and four hundred thousand dollars of investment and there was concern about the relationship between uh, about the percentage of uh, credits that were going to be used and the benefit for that that particular landowner vis-a-vis uh, -vis the investment made when you have another landowner just down the street who had a bigger investment and is only going to get about a five thousand dollar benefit what I pointed out to the EDA is that since we have to deal in years and we, we do the calculations to see how many credits we need whatever the dollars are the dollars are but we can tie it to a particular parcel and that's what the EDA said, let's tie it to this particular parcel, whatever parcel number that is, tie it to that parcel, do it for a one-year period, and the credits will, should be less than $27,000, but we can calculate that. The other thing is, is that you, uh, all these people have to have a statement that they're current on taxes, and uh, they, so we'll need to have a, a statement of currency on taxes on that. And that was a condition added to the EDA's recommendation for both of them today. Homes being a new business on this side of the river, there is no history of taxes. So you feel like the outcome of the EDA board, the recommendation, is, is what would be fair and equitable to any business similarly situated? Yes, I would say so, wouldn't you, Tim? Yeah, that's why we changed yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mr. Vetter. So if I'm clear then, Holmes is going to get 25000 Lumber Mart's going to get just over twenty thousand, and Todd's Trailer Sales is going to get five thousand. Yes, and that sounds equitable to everyone. The difference is you're dealing with one year benefit for two of the businesses and a five year benefit for the third business. But the five, one of the the five year and one of the one years are getting twenty five thousand and twenty thousand. And the other one year, who had just as big an investment as the other one year, is only getting five thousand. Just so I'm clear, I asked Mr. Gregoire if he would prefer to wait until the property on which he built the building came up to full tax value. He said he'd rather use it now, before the building comes up to full tax value, than wait when he could have a larger benefit. That was a choice by Mr. Gregoire. His value, tax value is not the $469,000 yeah. in this lot. Plus. Yeah. I mean, I, I tried to persuade him that he would benefit more by waiting, and he said he'd rather do it now. 
Keep it in writing. Keep it in writing that you did talk to him. I talked with him, yeah. Hey, anybody else have any questions on that? I see none. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, number five, request to catch for catch basin and manhill repair. Mr. Stewart all. Before you go, I want you to consider how your manhole repair fits into our branding. It's they're all connected to each other. <laughs> they're all in Minnesota. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but you have to look down instead of looking up. Depends on where you are. <laughs> so each year we uh, repair so many manholes and so many catch basins. That are in disrepair for various reasons, frost, weather, and other. Uh, this year we asked for some quotations from seven local um, contractors. We got quotations from two of them, and I've kind of listed the sites. There was 20 total sites that we that we looked at, and we prioritized them based on the funds that we have down to. Uh, these ones before you hear, these seven before you hear. Um, so I'm asking tonight to award the city's catch basin and manhole repair projects to Hop Construction and Highway Development. Six eighty six. I have ground three sites for twenty three thousand six ninety seven sixty six. Any any questions, questions? from us? Just one. Yeah. Um, we went down from twenty sites. To a number more like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that's just because that's how much money we had. Yep, that's correct. And we based the, we intend on using this list, and just we'll just continue to add to it as the years go. Good. Mr. President, anybody else have anything else on Mr. Stordahl's topic? Safety wise, no. We have different criteria. Yeah. Anybody have anything else for Mr. Stordahl for his topic? I, uh, I'd like Do you have something to, to ask him about manhole covers or manhole anything? No, the only right, thing. Hang I, on a second, please. The only thing I'd say. Is Henry, just hang on a second, please. Yeah. Anything else to add, Mr. Stordahl? Okay. Thank you, Henry. Move it. I said move it on for approval at the next meeting. Anybody else have anything? This is what I was talking about continuously taking care of infrastructure. He's doing that. He's got his eye on the ball. Does anybody else have anything? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move. Move by Pachevinsky, second by Tweet, and all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried, means adjourned. That's a simple, that is just.